all butter, lots and lots of butter. I'm Rio really Shipper and we are uh, from Cockpit in Rotterdam and Holland. And we are the distributor for our lodge in, uh, in, in the Netherlands and the Netherlands in Belgium. And uh, they asked me to be a judge uh, out here. And I really enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to the next uh, heat to see which one's going to win. This is really special, so I want you guys to crust it on the outside. Nice, sweet, yeasty on the inside. Uh, so we're looking forward to doing that as well. What was that? Baseball Yogi Bear? You know what he said? You know, he said that cornbread yeah. festival ain't no good. Yep. Is that where buffalo wings come from? Exactly. Right. Did you start that? Were you the tandem bells? Yeah. No, uh, you took she's taking a chance. Okay. I didn't think that was a natural West Virginia sunburn. Michelle, I'm Mark Kelly with Lodge. Where are you from? I'm from Columbus, Ohio. So you're you're a, a Buckeye. I am a Buckeye. <laughs> and what's your recipe today? It's called Shakshuka Top Cornbread Skillet. And Shakshuka is um, a tomatoey dish with eggs cooked on top of it. And I made it so that cornbread is underneath it. So you get the egg, the tomato, and the cornbread. And it's delicious. What, what was the influence that led you to make this uh, recipe? Well, a friend of mine had told me about Czech Shoot Guy. I'd never really heard about it before. And I made it for my family, and they liked it. And normally, we just would eat it with pita bread or things like that. And I'd heard about the cornbread festival and then the cornbread cook-off. So I said, ooh, that might be really good with cornbread. So that's how I came Here up with the idea. What are your thoughts so far about South Pittsburgh and what you see in the cornbread festival? Oh, I love South Pittsburgh. It's a small town. Actually, I'm from a small suburb of Columbus, Ohio called Bexley, okay. and Bexley's also a small town, so I feel right at home. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, and best of luck at the cook-off. Rentham, Massachusetts. Where is that, Pamela? It's about 40 miles southwest of Boston. So, so you're a Patriots fan. Oh, I'm a huge Patriots fan. Went to the Super Bowl, saw that amazing game. The GOAT, greatest of all time, took us to victory. Well, I have to say I'm a Falcons fan, but that's okay. Are you familiar with Are you familiar with a sail bag company in uh, Portland, Maine? I, do they make bean bags? No, they just make bags out of uh, old sails. Yeah. This This year's newest model is a number twelve. Oh, so cool. Patriots I color. To get one of those for sure. So, uh, what's your cornbread recipe, and what were the influences for you? Um, I wanted to do something a little different with the cornbread mix rather than make a traditional kind of cornbread dish. So I took the cor the uh, cornbread mix, the Marth White cornbread mix and um, combined it with several Cajun spices and then I make a batter out of it and I dip the catfish in the batter and fry it and then I make a jambalaya sauce with clams and shrimp and spicy peppers and tomatoes and it all gets served over rice. It's really good. Why don't you move here and open up a restaurant? I'd love to. <laughs> what do you think about South Pittsburgh so far? I'm loving it. We're having a great time. We've made a little bit of two of my girlfriends from high school here with me and we've made a weekend out of it. It's been, it's been wonderful. It could be a little cooler but other yes, than this, that. This is actually the first warm weekend of the spring so and the other, Monday this week it was raining, it was like 60 degrees. Yeah. Well, thank you so much and best of luck. Thank you so much. Thanks, have a good afternoon. Uh, what is, what's your name, where are you from, and what's your recipe? Yes, my name is Ashlyn Morgan. I'm from Athens, Tennessee, and my recipe is a Cuban cornbread sandwich with Cuban mojo sauce. Now that's kind of a rare recipe for this area. What influence uh, got you to make this recipe? Yes, well, I love studying different cultures and love combining my southern heritage with the cuisines of other parts of the world and so I call it just kind of like my southern world uh, cuisine that I just like to play around with at home. Well good, thank you so much thank and best of luck. You. Thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome to South Pittsburgh, Sherry. Thank you. And where are you from? Hi, I'm Sherry Kozlowski. I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia, and I'm going to be making a seafood pot pie today. What was the influence that led you to make that? I have to say that's one of the more unique recipes in this contest. Um, well, I knew that cornbread goes well with seafood, so and I make a, a regular seafood pot pie, so I just kind of infused the two and, you know, use the Martha White cornbread and Hopefully it's a winning press game. I'm, I'm hoping. Well, thank you so much for being. What are your thoughts about South Pittsburgh? Um, it's really nice. The, the festival is really something that's here. She's got a group here. We're a little proud of it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mary, uh, where are you from and what's your recipe? I'm from Long Beach, California, and my recipe is Cajun spoon bread. 
What led you to come here all the way from California? Uh, the contest, the cook-off. I've been following it for a number of years and finally got picked to come. So That's amazing. Yeah. What was the influence for you to create this uh, amazing re recipe? Well, I may live in California, but my mother didn't. And she grew up oh, in West Virginia. And then I grew up in Maryland. And one of my favorite things to eat ever was always spoon bread. You know? So being given a nice twist from your normal what are your thoughts about South Ohio. Pittsburgh and the festival so far? Oh, it's a darling little town, but could you turn the air on? <laughs> yeah. I have to say, this is the first really hot day of the spring. Oh, goody, goody. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Let's turn the ovens on. Thank you so much, and best of luck. Thank you, thank you. You know, the basic components of the, of the contest, from the moment you start your ovens, you have an hour to complete your recipe. Uh, you need to be able to plate for 10 judges, 10 different plates. Uh, but they do not have to be big servings. Okay, that needs to be plated? Because I thought we could yeah. just serve out of the cornbread, out of the skillet. Traditionally, it's plated. We have plates here. If you're not prepared for that, we can offer that. But we need, we need to put it on plates so we can hand them to the judges. So for presentation, don't we do it first? first? You can take it over there and be seen, and then it needs to be okay. plated okay. for 10 people. Okay. Yes, I'm That's sorry. Right. A lot, enough for 10 people. Yes. Uh, we will warn you. We'll give you a 15, Not 10, and 5 minute warning, and then turn off your, your ovens. But yes, you can show your recipe to the judges and then be prepared to plate for 10 people. Okay, great. Uh, so we have, we have paper plates. And the best color in everything. I'm sorry. I, I owe you a Kim and Tonic over at the hospitality suite. So again, uh, John will announce for you to launch your ovens, start preparing, and you have an hour. And uh, presentation, actually presentations often help people win. So you've got just a few minutes to launch. Thank you so much. And uh, I have to say, trying these recipes earlier, I think anybody can win. This is this, thing, this contest is wide open. So get back to your position. Thank you so much, and best of luck. Thank you. This is um, this is kind of we've got some real interesting twists so okay, on cornbread this year. Back some more kind back of exotic foods. There, so well. it's um, very right, so a very creative, and we're just looking forward right, to the next right. five recipes. I'm Barry Quarter. I'm looking forward to it. Based on the first round, uh, there was a lot of diversity. We had some shrimp, we had some steak, we had some, a gordita. So we had a little bit of everything. Uh, so I'm excited to see what they have. Look at one commissioner. And they, they kind of own the show, don't they? Every once in a while, I used to be on a TV show. They changed the rules. I had to go back home and tell them what was different. The Dayton, the mother. And it grows by the worldwide world. Salt, butter, lots and lots of butter. She's making cornbread custard, cut, crust. Oh my goodness, my goodness. You're not supposed to see this. In the tire. And they put all these both folding in the egg whites to keep it soft and custard. Just like me. Mm-hmm, that's some good looking stuff. These people certainly aren't professional. Also, are you like all right, ladies, 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Don't get nervous now. Don't get nervous. Can you say it one more time? 40. Well, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, they give you my hey, let's talk about those handles. Oh, wow. Chef, it's Suzanne Capliner from Signal Mountain. Any, any sports. And we are enjoying it. That pulls is 45 the out to show his cousin. Is anybody here? Congratulations. Hope, you're, you, hope you got a sense of humor. Just having fun. All right. I like it. <laughs> All right. With a snake. 
snake. That's, is that not a, after Kenny Stagel? <laughs> so up in West Virginia, let's talk about it. Just what I need. Football. That was not We out. I think we didn't have enough factory. Those stoves hot? Yeah, just a little. It stinks and keeps your husband away from you. And put it back in the skillet and then put the pork, ham, cheese, huh? fixings all in it. Oh, you're from Chattanooga? Put it back on top. You're north of Georgia? And uh, press it and put it back in the oven. Wow. What kind of file? Hey. Hey. Amy, we have an extra oven. Oh, here's the groupie. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. All right, all right, all right. Hey, y'all, come on. Yeah. And then after you get through with it, whopping it all over, there's a here heavy. underneath 20 feet tall. Uh, so so you know what? Like She's going to win. Over here, we got hey, three people in the like Who's got the water? Who's got the water? I think you get big money. Are you feeling better now? Yeah. Okay, good. And your color? Oh, yeah. Well, you look great. I don't know. Two skillets. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm talking about, look at this plate, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this plate. It's looking good. Over there, that I mean, she has got a presentation on. Turn your stoves off. Is that important time you'll be, need to be ready to present off? I've got eight more minutes. Eight more minutes. So we have to turn our stoves off. All the judges are out here looking. What's the most you've ever paid for Danny? For a dinner. What's the most he's ever paid for them? You know, I've got like Ruth Chris's, Ruth Chris Steakhouse. I go, here's a ticket, honey. I just want you to see how much this costs. Are you sure you just don't want to take it over for them and let them serve themselves? These people back right here in the back, there's 10 of them. The first one comes out gross looking, but out, it'll, it should come out. The line behind me. Right, the line starts over here behind me. Party left me. We're coming down to this wire here. A and a half. A minute and a half. Nanny Rain. Hallelujah. Well, I'll just tell you that uh, I started out the festival. I was, uh, when they first founded it, Ed Fuller called Bob and a bunch of others and said, we're getting bypassed by the highway down here. We got to do something to save our town. We need to have a festival. So we thought that'd be a good idea. We didn't know what kind. So I was, my wife was the first vice president and organizer along with Ed Fuller. And I was the chairman of logistics. I was also fortunate enough to write the uh, mission statement for the Cornbread Festival, which is to showcase the sights, sounds, the people, and the culture of South Pittsburgh, Tennessee to the world, and have a grand festival every year so that civic organizations, church groups, and community groups could raise money for their for their uh, for their organizations one time a year rather than having to sell donuts and chocolate year round. But the first job I had in the first festival, I was head of logistics because of my military background. And I was given, uh, uh, we had 22 subcommittees. Uh, we're in charge of, of all the real estate, laying it out, designated to crafters, food vendors, uh, helping get everybody in, getting all the tents up, all the porta potties, all the hand washing stations, uh, everything logistically and then and putting it up. And we start on Wednesday and we finish it up yesterday at five o'clock putting the putting the festival together getting all the parts 
So I was that chairman for about 10 years and gave it up to my assistant, Sam Durham. And now I'm Sam's assistant. And this weekend, uh, Bob Kellerman, a lifelong friend, called and asked me if I would MC the uh, the uh, cook-off and so I I said you must have run out of people to ask and you must be scraping the bottom of the barrel but Bob I'll do it for you uh, and it was a great fun it was I usually I'm too busy cleaning latrines uh, I used to be the latrine marine you might have seen me if you were here years ago uh, that was my get up uh, after I gave up the leadership of logistics he, he put me in charge of the porta potty so I became the latrine marine. So it's 21 years of fun and hard work for a community that I love and has been very, very good to me and my family. And uh, we're just tickled to death. We're tickled to death to uh, be part of it. And I don't know if I got another 21 years in me. I'm 67, but maybe at 88, I'll still be out here talking cornbread with people. Mr. Bob Kellerman, you're on your way out here at Lodge. Yeah, this is man. the 21st annual cornbread festival and cornbread cook-off. What do you think? I think it's marvelous. Uh, I'm so proud, so proud of the com community. Um, I'm ending my 48-year career at Lodge this year. That's so awesome. I told Bob earlier, you know, some people just don't know when to retire. And they go on and on and on. And I'm so proud that you, you understand when to do to it. it. That's so cool. But I'm going around like a loose tooth. <laughs> we like we like loose tooth here in Tennessee, don't we? Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, thanks for being such a good partner to the community. Wow. Thanks for being such a great leader at Lodge. Clearly, you're a legend, and your legend will live on long, long, long after you're gone, just like Joseph. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. All right, buddy. All right. The winner, the winner of the cook-off this year will receive $5,000 in cash, a $3,200 five-star range from five-star division of Brown Stove in Cleveland, and the coveted cast-iron skillet crown. It can only be worn for a few minutes, it's so heavy. So anyway, I'd like all the contestants to gather up here. All the contestants. The contestants Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn the mic over to Amy Rogers, my administrative assistant, who's done all the damn work this year for the, for the cook-off. Uh, you know, what can I say? She's terribly efficient. So, Amy, thank you. Give, give Amy a big hand.
Ready, Press? Okay, everybody, right up. Bye, y'all. Thank you. 